Hey everybody, it's Jesse. Today I'm going to try to do something that doesn't happen often. I am going to try to get done uh, what I said I'm going to get done uh, in the video description and uh, in my tweet. And I'm going to get it all completed in this stream and it's going to work. That's the goal. So. I normally don't prep beforehand what I'm going to do, but I knew there was going to be a lot of copy and pasting, so I got most of that out of the way. Uh, so I'll be explaining what I copied and pasted, but uh, in case you didn't read the description yet uh, for the video, uh, what I'm going to do today is get the suggestive story form working. So let me show you what that is first, uh, and then we can go to the code. So it's right in the middle of a Pomodoro session, so let me stop that. Um, here's the form. It's really simple. Name, email, and then just a multi-line form or multi-line input. So what we want to do is uh, when we submit this, it's going to go to um, our server.js uh, file. And then the data is going to get sent in an email, and we're going to use the SendGrid API to do that. So we've already have some of the setup done for that, since we're doing the same thing for another form, for the service request form. Uh, so we did that a long time ago, though. So uh, I think this will be nice because it's way less complex it'll be a little bit more accessible for beginners to understand what's going on since we don't have to handle checkboxes or the file upload field uh, so this you know just text inputs this is a much more likely scenario if somebody was actually working on a site and some they wanted just a simple contact form you know most sites have something like that but not all sites will need a multi uh, you know a multi file uh, upload so uh, and they won't need to tie that into the project management system or anything. But this is definitely a very common use case. So I, I wanted to do this, um, try to do it all in, in one video and have it be helpful. And if you notice, uh, the title for this video is different than I have been doing. Uh, so I had switched for this project to just saying what project it is and what day it is of that project. But after talking with some of the other, with Quincy and some of the other uh, YouTube contributors for Free Code Camp, uh, we decided that more descriptive names uh, might be better. And um, I, I agree. I think for those who are closely following the project, it's probably okay to have the titles like I, I did have them. Uh, but for anybody that's new or just sees a suggestion pop up and all they see for the title is Project 2, Day 20, they're going to have no idea what that's about. Uh, unless they took the time to click and read the description, but how many people are just going to click on a, a video and they don't they don't know what it is? So I'm going to try to do descriptive titles from now on. I may have to just change the title after the fact because I don't always know what we're going to end up doing during these streams. Uh, so in any case, uh, I just didn't want anybody to be confused by the title change. I did put. Uh, after the descriptive title, so I, it's emailing form data with React and Node.js. In parentheses, I put P2D28, so that's Project 2 Day 28. So it'll still be there. It'll still be in the description. Uh, that way, you'll know, you know, in the sequence of streams, what stream we're, we're on. Uh, but hopefully, this makes it uh, more accessible to new people or someone who maybe. Uh, doesn't want to or doesn't have time to watch all of the project, uh, but might be really interested in just one part of the project. Uh, so uh, anyway, let's um, let's get started. Let me say hi to everyone. All right, so uh, hey Sebastian, uh, Umberto says uh, he loves the uh, P2D28 tag. When I put that in there, I felt like I was describing a droid in Star Wars, like R2-D2 or something. Like, <laughs> Sorry, I'm a nerd. Um, 
Oh, okay, Umberto says, is it possible to change the previous titles to match this? Yes, definitely, and uh, I think I will try to go back. It's going to be tough <laughs> to go back and find the time to go back and do that, but I think um, I could probably go back and retroactively change the titles to match this format. That'll be better. That'll give it, I think... Um, well, for the same reason that I just said, you know, for this video, it's just going to be a lot easier for people to know what's going on in that particular video at a glance. I may actually change some thumbnails as well. Uh, so the thumbnails will most likely have my, my face on them, and that'll be really easy for people to know um, whether they're seeing a video from me or from, from Bo or Cody or anybody. Um, on the channel at a glance they'll immediately know so right now you don't there's not really any way of knowing unless you really look at the text on the thumbnail uh, so I think I can get rid of the live coding with Jesse as text and make the main text bigger and then have my face on there and then people will know alright that's one of Jesse's videos so anyway that's probably coming just some some changes uh, that are gonna happen uh, at some point. I don't know when, I need to get um, somebody to take my picture so <laughs> I can put it on there. Uh, but let's get started. And let me walk you through, I do wanna say um, Sebastian's been busy adding on to his pull request from uh, that I think he submitted yesterday initially, but he keeps adding to it and it's awesome. So I'm not going to go through this stuff. Probably what I'll do is when we finally merge that in, then I'll go through everything. Uh, but for now, uh, if you're interested in client-side form validation, check that out because there's some really good stuff in there. It's pull request 56. The link to the repo is in the description. Um, but now let me walk you through a little bit of what I've done so far, and then we can just pick up uh, from there. Uh, so you can see, let me make this a bit bigger for you all. On the right, we have the service request form. And I was copying heavily from the service request form. So I'm going to make this a bit smaller for now. Uh, so what I've done is I've added in, um, I've made it a, a stateful component. So. Uh, instead of a stateless functional component, which it was before, we need state. So I've added some state. Right now, all I have in here is uh, the state that we need for the modal that comes up when you submit to tell you, well, when it's loading and then whether it's successful or whether it's failed. Uh, but we're probably going to add some more state in here um, to handle the, the, the inputs. We copied over the uh, handle the input change and some of this stuff we can get rid of right we don't need check boxes on here uh, so we'll, we can make this a bit smaller uh, but right now it won't hurt anything to leave that in there um, we have this uh, handle form data so we make a new form data object uh, and then we're gonna post that to our um, URL which for now it's saying upload URL uh, just because I copied it over, but I did change the actual value to story form. That's the URL we're, we're actually going to send it to, so I'll probably change that name at some point so it's not confusing. Uh, we're just doing some things to handle the, the dialogues. Okay, so no, not really a big deal. This is just basic stuff from Material UI. Uh, and then down here on the, the fields, uh, I've added in, so in our service request form, uh, we've made, you know, constants for these fields. So I think I'm going to do the same thing, you know, for consistency. Since this form is so small, it would have been okay if I hadn't done this. But since we're copying so much, I think it'll just be easier uh, to do it in the exact same way on both forms. So this down here will change. Uh, but I have added, uh, you can see the, the dialogue components here, and I've added uh, a click handler here for the form data on the submit button. All right, so that's about all the farther that I got. The only other thing is that I put in the server.js, 
um, let's bring this out so I think I have it over here. So for a server, I've added in a section to handle this form. So I don't think I've finished it, uh, but here we are. So we have story form. And what I've done here is just copied from what we are doing in the service request form uh, to handle that. I've copied everything except for, of course, uh, what we had for file uploads. And I also don't need to send this data to a project management system. So I just copied the SendGrid stuff. And uh, it's nice. We're already initializing SendGrid with our API key. So uh, we don't have to repeat everything. So you see, this section is a lot shorter uh, than what we were doing for the service request form, uh, which is nice. So. That's just the big overview. Once we get things going and uh, we can step through what's going on, and I'll explain it a little bit more. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time time up front explaining, uh, so I don't want to run out of time uh, to actually get this this going. So it may seem like I've already done a lot, uh, but don't worry. I will explain it more, and um, I'm expecting that it won't just work right off the bat, and that I'll need to take time to troubleshoot. So. If that doesn't happen, then that'll be amazing, uh, and that, that'll be cool. I'll like that, but realistically, uh, when I'm copying so much stuff uh, and trying to make it work, I'm, there's going to be something that doesn't work, so it'll definitely take up some time on um, you know, trying to figure out what exactly we need to change. So let's go. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to uh, explain as best I can uh, what we're doing. I think instead of initiating the state like this, I think I'm going to just copy everything that's here and then get rid of what we don't need. So I normally do like setting state like this as opposed to using the constructor, but since we're already using it over here, I think it'll just be easier. Uh, I'd rather just utilize as much as I can from this than kind of changing it and rewriting it. And just, you know, for efficiency and consistency. All right, so we only have one multi-line field. Let's get rid of all of this except our one. Uh, and we only need name and email email here. We don't have any checkboxes. And let's see. Yeah, these are checkboxes. So we don't need this either. Okay. And we don't need this file input here. Uh, but I do want to initialize form there. Okay, wonderful. So this day form string box, we don't need checkbox props. There we go. So this is form string props. Okay, great. So uh, just to explain uh, a little bit about what's going on here, uh, there's, we don't necessarily have to use the constructor. So I was saying before we could just initialize state as state equals and then put our object there if we did that um, and and also did not bind things here then we would need to use uh, some uh, arrow functions well like this to bind this in the proper way otherwise we need to do this Okay, so you can see right now we're only doing it once. It's not a big deal. But if you had a lot of things and you had to, you know, copy this, let's say you had 10 different things, it's much cleaner just to use arrow functions uh, if you can. So uh, I think we've, we've talked about that in, in depth a lot more in, in uh, previous streams. Um, but, I, I mean, I thought it was um, worth it to go over it uh, and I forgot to start my Pomodoro session <laughs> I just remembered all right let's see I started 15 minutes ago so all right I'm just gonna start it from here then so we'll start the session from here after this timer goes off I'll take five minutes and go to the live chat and answer any questions that you have uh, I'd like to get in at least two Pomodoro sessions there is um, uh, 
something going on on campus later on um, that I'd like to go to. Uh, so it's at three. So if I can make it there, I would like to. Uh, but we'll see how this goes. Okay, so now that we have that, there's only a few more things that we need to bring in to make, to get it ready to at least test it. Okay, so we have, we need format, label to property. Let's bring that in. There we are. We don't need anything with the files. We're already bringing in the handling form data. We are going to need to adjust this a bit because you know we're still getting the upload input things. We don't need that. Dialog close. Okay. Great. All right, so let's go ahead and um, let's try to remove some of the file input stuff that we don't need. So obviously this is for file input. Um, this is fine here. This is fine. Okay, great. That looks good. Let's change the text. Your story suggestion sent successfully. Okay. All right, now let's. Uh, populate our form with these uh, and the data that we have in uh, in our constructor. So you can see over here on our service request form on the right hand side how we're how we're doing this. Uh, so let's copy let's copy what we're doing here. I am going to have to change it slightly. Yeah, so we'll have to change this. I can change it here. Let's do that now while I'm thinking about it. Okay, so I want this to be full width. So we're using the materialized column classes. So if I want it to be full width, uh, I'm, I'm saying on small screens and up, I want it to be 12 out of 12 columns. So it's a 12 column layout. So that's 12. You can see with these, I want them to only take up half the width. Uh, so on small screens, it's still, I want it to be full width. But then on medium and up, I want it to only take up six of the 12 columns. So not every framework has the same uh, amount of columns. Uh, but this is somewhat common way to do it uh, in terms of just the concept of splitting the page up into columns. Uh, it's kind of a nice way to handle uh, responsiveness and um, you're changing your layout based on screen width. Okay. All right, so that's that's taken care of. Now here's where we're actually going to put this stuff in. Now we don't need these column classes anymore because we're including those uh, up above. So we're just going to grab these two and let's see. we can replace. Let me make sure I don't get the. Uh, there we go. Okay, we have this in as well. All right, wonderful. Let's save that and see what what, uh, what we get uh, on the page. It should look exactly the same. Awesome, and it does, right? So now, instead of us putting those in uh, as we had them before, um, 
you know, where you could actually see each input. Uh, now we're just iterating over our arrays that we had here. So you can see we have name and email, and then this array, which right now only has one item in it, um, becomes our multi-line field. So uh, this is you know somewhat unnecessary, uh, I guess, to do it like this. We could have just put the multi-line down there, uh, but it didn't really take that long since we were just copying it over. And this makes it nice uh, later on if we want to put in fields. All we have to do is just add things to this array. And if we really wanted to clean this up, we could put this data in another file somewhere and then just import it. Um, and that would be good if we had really large arrays uh, of data. And that way, you know, could keep this clean and make it, you know, much more reusable uh, to just, you know, pull in data, uh, different data. All you'd have to do is just import a different, uh, different data set. Uh, or you could even pull it in from an API or, you know, or anything. But for now, uh, this will work. There's just a, a very specific uh, use case for this and it's not likely to change often so this should be fine okay so I think we're ready we're ready to try to actually send this and let me just do this first I think we'll need to do this on our uh, port 9000 um, and so we'll have to um, build. I'm not doing any validation right now on this email. Uh, let me. I don't even think it's required. I don't need this. Um, also, um, right now I don't even think it's it's set. I'll I'll get into um, what's going on in the server in a second after I test this. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, so let's. Um, Let's go here. I'll probably need to build again. Yeah. So, do I have my. Here, let me bring over my terminal. Uh, I am doing all of this in the master branch, uh, which now that I think about it, I'm doing quite a lot. So it probably would have been better to do it uh, in a different branch. But uh, if I need to, I can uh, commit this to a different branch. Um, let's say if, if it doesn't work out and I don't want to keep this on the master branch and it needs more work. Uh, but I think it should work out. All right, so I need... Um, to build right um, I think this will build first when I run this no it doesn't um, I'm gonna need to double check okay so basically we, we have um, like two different ports running uh, on one of them, uh, the forms actually work. Uh, on the other one, it doesn't. But this one pulls uh, its data from the, the build, like the production build files. So that's why it's showing two different things for this. This is still reflecting the last time uh, that we did a build. So I think build is still the command to use. Okay, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but while we're waiting for the build, uh, I do have the uh, secondary stream going on Instagram. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing my office and seeing me as I'm coding, uh, you can check that out. My, um, uh, my name on Instagram is in the description. Okay, great. Let's start this up again, and we should see a change. There we go. Whoops. No, we didn't see a change. There we go. Just had to uh, manually refresh. Okay.
great. So what should happen now is that we shouldn't get an error. But let's let's see. Um, let's just try to send this. Hmm. Okay, we did get an error. Let's see if we got any message about that. No message. All right, let's check out the server. And uh, this will be all right, because then I can explain what's going on anyway. Uh, and as I explain it, I should find uh, why I'm getting the error. OK, so we're bringing in the SendGrid API. We're also bringing in Formidable. This helps us to handle form data. Uh, this is um, Node.js. Uh, we're using Express. OK, so. Um, we're also using a lot of environment variables. So when you see things like this process uh, env, these are variables that we've saved in another file, and that file does not get committed to the repository. So it's good for things like passwords and API keys, things that you don't want the whole world seeing. Uh, you can put in that file, and then in, in the files that actually do get committed to the repo, you can just add this it'll grab that value no one will ever be able to see it okay so that's what we're doing we're just uh, we're bringing in uh, SendGrid um, and we're passing in the API key we let's see okay so we will be utilizing this so uh, when we want to actually send this to SendGrid, uh, we're going to call make uh, SG request, and then we're going to pass in uh, the body, right, the data. Um, and so this just sends it. Uh, it's a post. Um, you know, here's our path, and then we're sending our body uh, JSON format. We're not, we're not uh, going to deal with this stuff uh, with this form. If you're interested in uh, the Rike API, uh, you can check out one of our previous videos. Right now, I, you'd have to look at the descriptions, but hopefully I'll get um, the titles changed so that it's a bit easier to find uh, certain titles. All right, so here's where we're actually handling the story form. So story form. So we're making a new, using Formidable, we're making a new form. We're setting our headers, parsing the data. OK, we're taking the fields, and we're creating this fields object. We should be adding um, key value pairs. We're also making a string, and this is what we want to show up in the email. Okay, and we want this, this break here so that it makes it readable and it's not just all the values all scrunched together. False. We're doing error handling here. All right, so here's where here's where we're doing uh, sending the email. Um, all right, so if enable send email, so this is one of our environment variables. I mean, this itself isn't the environment variable, but up up the top we're grabbing that environment variable. Uh, so if we have en enabled send emails, then this will run. Otherwise, it won't. And um, this is because we're running tests that will automatically uh, try to fill out the form and submit it, make sure everything's working. So we don't want email sent every time we run that test. So normally, we're going to keep that environment variable uh, as false. Uh, but I'm going to go in and set it at true here in a minute um, so we can test that out. We have you know, just um, this part is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we have a to email, a from email, a subject, right? Uh, here's your content, and you can see I've put this field string that you saw we built uh, up a little farther up. Um, the type is text HTML. All right, so 
you want to make sure if you're putting HTML tags in your, your field string or whatever you want to call this, of, of course, um, you need to put HTML. Otherwise, it's not going to render as HTML. Um, so this is where, and I mean, this is from the SendGrid API. Uh, this is where we're adding in uh, all of our constants here. And then now we're finally calling that function that uh, we went over a little bit earlier. Okay, so we're sending in right this this new uh, mail, right? We're passing that in here. And that's pretty much it. So as I went through there, I didn't notice anything. <laughs> Other than the fact that we've set it to not send emails, right? I didn't actually notice anything else um, that should be causing that uh, to not work. Uh, it's possible that I just didn't hit save on one of these files. Uh, so I, I just did that now. Uh, but my timer is up, so I'm going to take a five-minute break right now. I'm going to go to the live chat, answer any questions that you have. Um, and then after that five minutes, we're going to do another 25-minute session. Hopefully, it'll just take one more session to get this working. I think we're close. All right. Uh, Sebastian says, I like the live coding with Jesse. It looks like a TV show. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that too sometimes. That's like the name of this of the show. Um, that was actually, I didn't even pick that. I think it was, maybe it was Bo. I think it was Bo. It's possible it was Quincy, but one of, one of those guys uh, just, they titled like one of the videos that and just said, hey, here's an example. You could use this. And I thought it, it fit. It, it explains exactly what's going on. So I uh, just left it. Uh, Kamal says this looks so complicated just started watching though uh, so not sure if you're still watching because that uh, comment came right at the beginning uh, but yeah coming in at this point in the project it probably looks complicated because we have so much going on but if if you can start closer to the beginning uh, you'll see that we started just from basic things and just built little by little uh, so it'll be a lot easier to understand then but even if you can't watch all the previous um, streams. I'm trying to do my best to explain as I'm going along and uh, feel free to ask any questions in the live chat and hopefully you could at least get some tips out of it. Uh, okay, Sebastian says uh, to push his changes to a branch so people can submit PRs to that. Um, yeah, I would definitely do that. Sorry about that. I wasn't even thinking uh, thinking about that. So I'll, um, I'll probably have time to get to that before I leave uh, today. I might actually merge it into master or at least into the... Um, into the branch that we were doing the server side validation on as well because uh, I, I like how how it looks uh, now I know there's a little bug with the um, with the UI but I don't think it's actually that terrible I, I have some ideas for how to fix it but even if we didn't fix it I I don't think it's it's that bad so I think the value of having that immediate validation far outweighs um, the slight shift um, and kind of increase in spacing that happens. Uh, Umberto says, I still like the thumbnails as they are, though, unless you're really looking to have your person, your face, be known for providing incredibly helpful project tutorials. Yeah, um... <laughs> so I, I originally didn't want to put my face on there uh, because... I don't know. I just I like I didn't want it to be about me. I just wanted it to be like about 
the code. Um, but I don't know. So there's two reasons. Like one thing is I, I don't think I can separate like me and my personality from what we're doing now because like it is me on here, you know, and that's, that's what's unique about what I'm doing is, is me, right? The code is the code. Uh, but so anyway, I'm not quite as worried about that now as I was initially. Um, I just, I didn't want it to seem like I wanted people to look at me or anything, but also, um, videos that do have a face on it tend to be clicked more often than videos that don't. Um, so just in general, so it might not be a bad idea. And there's that immediate recognition uh, that'll just help people differentiate. Since we have so many different uh, people contributing to the Free Code Camp channel right now, it might make things a little bit more clear. So anyway, I'm gonna try, but I, I'm not ready for that yet. I don't have any, uh, any pictures ready or I haven't even tested out how I would do it. So it won't happen immediately. Probably not even next week. It'll, it'll be later on. Um, Har Harshit uh, says, why don't you use Node Mailer? Uh, basically, I, um, I already had a SendGrid account and it was just really easy to use SendGrid. So when we set up the other, um, I was already using SendGrid on the other version of this uh, project, which is not using Node. Uh, so I needed to send, I needed to send the emails client side for the version of this that's live right now that we're we're redoing. And so I used Email JS and SendGrid to be able to send client side uh, through SendGrid. So since I was already doing this through SendGrid, um, kind of in a roundabout way. Uh, I um, I decided just to stick with it uh, for this. So I don't know. I haven't used Node Mailer before, so it may be a better option in general for Node. Uh, but anyway, that's why I ended up going with SendGrid. All right, awesome. So um, last thing I'll I'll go over. Actually, I'm almost, let me just finish up what's in the live chat now and then we'll start. Uh, it should just take me a minute. So uh, Umberto is getting a, gonna get a job offer today, most likely. So awesome, congratulations on that. Definitely let me know um, how that goes. If you, if you take the job, um, yeah, that'll, I'm really happy for you. So uh, yeah, definitely keep us up to date. Uh, and Umberto is working on a C Sharp .NET tutorial series uh, on a project that he's working on. So I'm I'm looking forward to that as well. That's uh, that's awesome. We actually. Um, uh, I've, I've been mentioning that we've been going through the process of trying to hire a developer uh, here for um, for another department um, here at the university that I work at, and uh, I was on the, the team that was um, interviewing all the candidates, and uh, we finally found a candidate that I think we're going to extend an offer to, but they're going to be working with C Sharp and .NET, and they, so they're going to need to brush up on that. So. Umberto, if you do that series, I'm going to refer that person uh, to your tutorial series uh, to help them get up to speed. Because I certainly don't do very much with C Sharp or .NET, so this other uh, person is going <laughs> to have to handle all that, and I'll handle all the uh, JavaScript stuff. Okay. <laughs> um, all right.
right. So I see um, Sebastian and Patrick were giving some advice here on the error I was just getting. So let's go back to this. I'm going to start the timer and um, let's go in. So it seems like um, Sebastian's saying that the error was given from client side since you don't get any data from the response in the client side. Um, also, Patrick says, I would have seen some output in the terminal. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, I see there are some other questions in there now. I will get back to the questions after I finish this, um, this session. So uh, don't worry. If you can stick around, uh, I, will, uh, I will get to all the questions. Okay, so let's check. Yeah, I actually didn't check the console at all when I tried to send that. So let me just submit. All right, I'm getting nothing. Um, item hidden by filters. Yeah, are we sending anything? Whoa. Story form. Um, let me just try to add all these in. Yeah, I didn't think we were doing any type of validation. So, um, since we've already checked out the server, and it's probably not the server since we're not getting any. Um, oh, wait a second, we're getting something now. Service is 159. All right. <laughs> I'd much rather see an error message than nothing when something doesn't work. 159, okay. Let's see. All right, so do we have... I thought I checked this out before I started the stream and we needed that. Okay, that, right? We definitely do need this. Uh, let me go through. Let me go through this slowly. All right, so that's good. Let's open, open close. close. All right, that's closed. It's closed. This is always an issue when um, I'm copying and pasting things and modifying as I go, uh, making sure that I have all the right brackets. Uh, and, and parentheses, uh, making sure they're all closed. Okay. All right, that's... This looks good. Uh, this looks like I have everything. Let me go back to that message. Oh, m missing. I thought it was... I'm missing a Is it here or is it after? After. Yes. There we go. Okay. Missed that before. All right, let's try this again. Yay, it's done. Okay. Awesome. So look, we've got uh, our fields, which are nonsense right now, but it's sending the data to the server and we're at least getting this back in the console. Now the next step is uh, on my other screen, I'm gonna go to my um, environment variables and I'm going to enable sending emails. Okay, so I can't show you my environment variables uh, because then you'd, you'd see everything, <laughs> uh, my API keys and stuff and I'd have to change them. So um, I'm trying to think, did we have did we put in a test one? I think we did. I just wanted something to refer you all to if you're not familiar with what it should look like. And I think, 
I think we have, there we go. So we have an example of the environment variables. So this is what I'm seeing on my other screen, uh, except it actually has the keys in there. So this is what I mean. Uh, really simple file. Okay, if you want to do a comment, uh, you just put a hashtag. Um, and then you just put in the name. And usually it's you, you use all caps uh, and underscores. And then equals and then whatever value uh, you have. And then you can, right, you can put whatever uh, variables you want in here. So anyway, that's, that's what I mean by um, environment variables. Okay, so let's do it again and see if I get an email. Actually, let me think. <laughs> Will this work? Yeah, it should. I was just trying to think if I'd have to build this again. Or if it would still try to pull the environment variables from here. Let me see my build files. I guess I can just check my email. <laughs> <laughs> and if I don't see it, then I'll um, I'll try to build again. Uh, let's see. Okay, Sebastian said I just try to restart the server. Actually, I don't have my Gmail open. Let me open it up. Okay, yeah, I didn't get anything. So let's restart the server. Um, see if it doesn't work this time then I'll um, I guess I can try uh, doing a rebuild Ooh. okay um, let's see all right awesome so I got the email and let me, let me pop this out so I can show you all. So there we go. There's the email. I know it's really small, uh, but it's really basic. doesn't look great. Obviously, you know, before I would want this to, to be live, I would make this look a little bit nicer. Uh, but you see it sent it to my email. Uh, so let's, let's check this out just to kind of step through everything. Uh, so the data's come back here, all right, to our server.js file, and we've put in the to email, which was my email address, right? So we know it sent it there. The from email uh, so, and the subject you can see here, new suggest a story form submission. Uh, and here's the from email, test at example.com. Um, and then here's our values. So uh, everything works. What, what we want to add to this, which I don't know how much time I have right now. So what we would want to add, which I may or may not get to this uh, today, is we want to send an email to the person uh, who's filling this form out. So we, we would want to grab that email address uh, value and then also send that to that person as well. Uh, I can't quite remember how to do this with the API, but I think it would, I could probably just add a comma and then put another email address. Although I may want to actually send an entirely new email, uh, so I would probably just repeat this and um, have a different have different content uh, based on one going to the user who submitted the form and another one going to uh, the people in my department uh, who would be getting this uh, this form. Um, so I'd want to do that. I'd also want some validation. So client side, we would want to make sure that the email address is a real email address. And we'd probably want to make sure that the name is a valid name. So if somebody just put in um, all special characters or all numbers, that's not really a valid name. 
so we'd want to check for that. Uh, we'd probably want to check too if the story was longer than a certain amount, right? Nobody's going to suggest an entire story that's, let's say, four characters long. So we'd want to decide on a reasonable length that we'd be willing to accept. Uh, and and then that way, that'll cut down on maybe some submissions that uh, either are accidental, you know, somebody, I don't know, hits enter or clicks before they were ready, um, or maybe, you know, potentially some spam submissions. Um, so we'd want to do that client side, and then potentially we could server side as well. So we would do a check certainly to make sure... Uh, that we actually do have a valid email before we try to send to that email address. Um, so I actually didn't haven't done that server side yet. So I have to figure out how to do that uh, server side. Uh, but I don't want to be sending the SendGrid API some invalid email addresses. Um, yeah, we just if somebody submits something that's an invalid email, uh, certainly we can't send that user an email back. What I'm thinking though is uh, if that were to happen it would probably be somebody uh, trying to circumvent the client side uh, validation. Uh, so probably don't even really want emails from those people. So at that point we would just stop and not even send an email uh, to anyone. Um, maybe could send one. Um, I could maybe send one to me just to say, hey, something weird happened with this email, check it out. Uh, and I could check the form just to make sure nothing's broken at that point. Um, but anyway, you could see, um, I don't know, you kind of see where I'm going just to add some extra things. We would want to make the uh, content of the email look nicer. Um, yeah, uh, but that's basically it. So. Uh, we've gone through, I know, I realized I copy and pasted a lot at the beginning, so uh, it was a little bit of a cheat uh, in terms of, you know, I didn't really go from scratch, uh, but, I mean, when do we ever make something direct, you know, from scratch? We're always borrowing from previous work that we've done or um, uh, from other people's work, uh, proper, properly attributed, and... Um, yeah, so in this case, we benefited greatly from work previously done, some by me and a lot by pull requests from others. Uh, so uh, you could see, you know, we borrowed from the service request form. And so this will be available on the uh, GitHub repo. I'll commit this. Actually, since this works, I think I'll just commit it now. Uh, and then that way... Uh, if anybody's new and not really familiar with Git, you could see uh, the process uh, in committing and pushing. Uh, so let's go git status. And you can see we've changed the server.js file and our story.js file. All right, that's what we want to see because we did change those files. Uh, if we saw some other file in here uh, that we, we didn't think that we had changed, maybe it was something accidental. Uh, then we could check it out. But now I'm going to go git commit, and I'm going to put the am flag, and that means we're committing. So we're adding, we're committing with a message all at the same time. So it just saves a step. And let's say um, send form, uh, send story form data file email. Send grid. Okay, great. So now our tests are going to run. Uh, we've set up, uh, and by we, I mean who set up the tests? Kevin. So Kevin contributed and set up some tests. Uh, so the tests are going to run. Uh, we're also running some uh, automatic uh, code. Um, I guess linting and formatting and so that runs as well so it makes our code uh, adhere to a standard so we're using the standard JS uh, standard and there we go so all the tests are passed I actually got another email I think 
So I, I got some emails from the service request form because I had set that environment variable. Uh, so right now we don't have any tests written for this new form that we've put on here. So we'll probably want to write a test for that as well. Um, let's see. All right, so everything works. So that's now committed, but it's not yet on GitHub. If we want this to be reflected on a GitHub repository, we have to push it. So we'll do git push origin master because we're on the master branch. There we go. So we've just pushed our code from the master branch on our local machine to the master branch on the GitHub repo. So if you go there now, you'll be able to see all the new stuff that we uh, had just done. It may look slightly different since we auto formatted everything, uh, but that's a good thing because we all have the same standard formatting. Even if you were to clone this repo and run it on your own machine, if you go to, to commit, it would format it the same way as well. So you don't really, it's kind of nice. You don't have to worry about learning the code style that I prefer. And I don't have to worry about uh, pull requests coming in in a totally different style. Uh, so if you can set something like that up on your project, I think it's really helpful, especially if you have more than one person. Uh, but even if it's just you, it is still helpful to, to keep yourself, the code that you're writing clean uh, as well. So we've kind of demonstrated how to do this in, uh, in previous videos. I think, yeah, there is a title of the video that says something like um, using prettier and standard JS. Uh, so if you look through my playlist, um, it's in the previous project. So not project two, but in the first project, you'll see that uh, if you're interested in setting something like this up. All right. Um, while I, before I forget, <laughs> I'm going to set this environment variable to false on my other screen uh, so I don't get, I don't accidentally spam myself with lots of emails. Um, so I think now, now I am going to go to the live chat uh, and uh, take your, your questions. So this will end up being a short stream today, but uh, like I said, there is something I'd like to do in about a half an hour here on campus. Uh, so uh, right now, if you were just here for the code, uh, I'm going to do question and answer. So if you can't stick around for that or don't want to stick around for that, uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, I'll be back on Monday. So uh, please join again if you can. And otherwise, if you have a question, please put it in the live chat now. I don't think there's a ton of stuff in there, so it shouldn't take me too long to get through. So don't, don't wait uh, to ask, or uh, the show might end before you get it in there. Uh, if for some reason you can't stick around, I'll still try to answer your question, and you can catch the answer on the recording, which will be available on Free Code Camp uh, just a few minutes after the live stream ends. Otherwise, uh, you can ask me questions on any social media uh, channel that I'm on. I'm on most of the most popular ones. Uh, I prefer direct messages on Twitter, or you could just you know tag me in a tweet or something. So, uh, but whatever you want to do. Uh, so I am going to scroll up a bit so I don't miss any of the questions, and I'm just going to go down through. Uh, since there's not a lot in here, I'll try to read out the comments as well and um, please feel free if you're in the live chat uh, to add your own answers and opinions to the questions I'm certainly not an expert um, so if you have a lot of experience in some area where someone's asking a question uh, I would really appreciate uh, you kind of adding you know your expertise to the discussion okay all right, so Kenny says, no idea what is going on, but looks cool and complicated for me now. Uh, good job, though. Uh, so Kenny, uh, Kenny asked that a while back. Not sure if you're still here, Kenny, but um, did I already answer this one? Looks complicated. I thought I already answered this. Maybe I did, or I commented on it, or at least one that was similar. Uh, so just briefly, I'll kind of sum up what I said before. Um, complicated now because we're on day 28 of this project and we've had lots of pull requests from other people so it does seem really complicated but we we just build up little by little so we started out small with just really basic project and then kept adding and adding so um it's not 
it's not anything that you all couldn't couldn't do yourself. Uh, you just remember, you know, it, it's it doesn't get this big and complicated right away. You know, you just break off tiny little pieces uh, that you can handle and just kind of work on it. If you could see, I have um, this Trello board here, which gives us, you know, these little chunks. And let's see, two, probably three. Actually, that's not bad. We got. Um, got this done in less time than I expected. Uh, I'll probably not move this to done though because I still want to add some validation and things as well. So it's not entirely finished. Um, but you know the basic functionality is certainly there. Uh, but anyway, uh, I wanted to show you the Trello because uh, you can see you know everything gets broken down into very small manageable chunks. I try to break things up into chunks that are eight Pomodoro sessions or less. Uh, if it's bigger than that, you can probably break it down even smaller. Uh, the bigger the in terms of the time you think it will take, the less accurate your estimations will be. So it's better to try to break things down into smaller chunks uh, if you want accuracy in your estimates. Um, you can see I don't always do that. Like for this one, I oh actually no, I estimated five and I've taken up thirteen and I'm still not done with this one. So not always accurate in the estimates but anyway uh, just you know, kind of like trying to be encouraging uh, if you're coming in in the middle of this you know don't think this is like too much for you it's it's just that you know we're very far into this project at this point so uh, I really think that a, a lot of you uh, could definitely get something out of these videos um, even if we're farther along and um, you know, ask ask all the questions that you need to. Oh, okay. Patrick said it should be suggestions were sent or suggestions was sent. So did I? I think I made some type of grammatical mistake somewhere. Um, so let me let me check that out. Is in the server? I don't know if it's in server or maybe it's over here. Your story suggestions were sent. Okay. Uh, your story suggestion was sent. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks, Patrick. Um, uh, Eslam says, Hi, all. I've done a bit of Node.js now, uh, but I'm struggling with understanding structure. It all seems a bit messy compared to uh, PHP. Any suggestions? Um, I'm not 100% sure what you mean by um, messy. Uh, I have worked a bit with PHP. Uh, it's possible that, I don't know, like I say, since I don't understand exactly what you mean by messy, maybe I'm, I'm kind of off here. Uh, but it's possible that, you know, JavaScript is a different you know, a little bit different style than, than some of your other server side, you know, traditional server side languages. So, um, you know, that could make it seem messy, like as compared to something else. Uh, if you're coming from JavaScript and not from something else, it would seem normal, obviously. So uh, I would probably say it could, it could be the case that it's not inherently messy. It's just a matter of uh, what someone is used to. Uh, and the comparison between those things. Uh, but I don't really have any suggestions in terms of trying to make it be less messy. Like I said, because I'm not, although I do have some experience with PHP, uh, I wasn't that into PHP. So to me, Node doesn't look messy. My server.js file looks messy. Because it certainly does. It's huge and it needs some refactoring. Uh, but in general, no doesn't look uh, messy to me. So sorry, it's not really uh, much of an answer. Uh, probably isn't that much help to you, but um, maybe someone else uh, in the chat uh, possibly has some, some further insight into that. Uh, Sammy says, any thoughts on using functional libraries like ramda.js? Um, I haven't used Ramda. I've seen some talks at conferences about Ramda, and um, it seemed really interesting. To tell you the truth, uh, I can't. I can't remember that much about it. 
uh, from uh, from what I had seen of it before. So, sorry, I can't really give um, give my opinion other to say that I do remember when I saw the presentation. I thought it was really interesting, uh, but I haven't had an opportunity to use it since then. Uh, and you know, because of that, I really don't I don't remember that much about it. <laughs> okay, so we, we had someone, I'm not even going to say who it is, but it's just funny. Someone came in in, in the, the live chat and said, yo, 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 like twice, uh, just a bunch of yos. Hi, bye, I subbed, I unsubbed, lol. Uh, and then a bunch of um, emojis. And then some more yos. So not really sure what's going on there, but <laughs> it made me uh, laugh a little bit. Um, let's see, some guy says, and that, that's actually the name, uh, this person's uh, Twitter or uh, YouTube handle is some guy, uh, says, I'm getting confused learning React, patience, patience. Um, yeah, it can be confusing at times. Um, I'm trying to learn Redux with React right now, and uh, I'm getting confused about that. Uh, although I think I'm having some errors that aren't exactly Redux related uh, and I think that's causing even more confusion because I'm looking for the solution in terms of how to do Redux and now I'm starting to think that the problem is somewhere else uh, which is even worse because now I have no idea where to look uh, but I definitely understand uh, the confusion it did take me quite a while before I really understood uh enough about react to be confident and to build you know real like production sites uh with react umberto says uh this is when we we're talking about the new web developer that hopefully uh will be starting soon uh umberto says well i hope they're already familiar with net uh but i hope that if they're not that whatever i end up publishing actually helps yeah i'm, I'm sure sure it'll help um this person is has worked with .NET and C Sharp a little bit. They're a lot more familiar with PHP. I was impressed with their problem solving skills in the technical interview. Uh, we actually just had them do some JavaScript, um, like algorithms, and um, and I, I was impressed. Uh, so ran into a little bit of a uh, little bit of trouble but didn't give up and was able to like very calmly logically work their way through and find where the error was uh, so anyway I'm, I'm hopeful that someone like that will be able to pick up on things and, and persevere and learn what they need to uh, what they need to learn okay so Sammy says um, in response to some guy that Code Academy has a good tutorial, then you can create the React projects on free Code Camp. So yeah, actually that's good. I did start out with the Code Academy tutorial. It was nice because you didn't need to uh, worry about setting anything up on your own machine. I know one of the big barriers for me in getting into React at first was Webpack. I um, was confused by Webpack. I had originally started out using Grunt, then I moved to Gulp, uh, like I think a lot of people did. Uh, and then I, um, I was trying to make the switch to Webpack and learn it, but I just kept getting confused. And um, so it wasn't until I found Create React App and Next.js. And I think I, I think I first started to learn React before Create React App came out. Uh, so I kind of had taken a little break from it for a while, and then that came out, and I came back to it. That made it a lot easier for me because it handles a lot of the setup and you can just get to React. Uh, so that really helped me out. So if you don't want to deal with the setup stuff at first, then Code Academy is a great uh, resource. Um, Patrick asks, uh, when are you going to be putting this, putting this on a server? Uh, next week, I, I hope to put this on a server next week. Uh, so at that point, that'll be cool because you all can test it out uh, without having to run it locally. 
uh, I, I need to put it somewhere so that people in my department can um, can work with it. So I just want to wanted to finish up things like I needed to get this form functional because people are going to test it and want to know uh, what's <laughs> what's going on. Um, I need to put in. There's a bit of new information that needs to go in there. Uh, so I need to finish what we were working on yesterday, uh, putting in a modal with some extra information about photography projects. Once I get that in, then it'll be fine to demo. So at some point next week, I'm probably going to set up a um, a server. Uh, I'll just do a droplet on DigitalOcean. I think just kind of a basic five dollar droplet. I'm going to run. Um, uh, Ubuntu uh, 16.04, uh, we're going to run Node, we're going to do Nginx as a reverse proxy, we'll set up a, um, an SSL with Let's Encrypt. Uh, so I have done that before. Um, so I don't know if I should do another stream with that. Um, maybe I will, we'll see. Um, I'd hate to repeat the exact same thing, uh, but it might be worthwhile, we'll, we'll see. Let me know if you all have any opinion on whether you'd want to see the server set up uh, or not, because I can definitely do that you know, earlier in the day uh, and not, not on the stream. All right, so Mike says hi. Hey Mike, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Um, Oh, Sebastian says, Monday I'm moving to Germany. Don't know when I'll be able to watch the streams again. Oh, wow. Sorry to hear that, Sebastian. Um, well, try to keep in touch if you can. If you can't make it for the streams, for the live chat, at least try to keep in touch, um, you know, other, other ways um, through, you know, through really what, whatever you, you prefer, you know, Twitter or whatever. Um, and... Uh, I really appreciate all your contributions in the live chat. I hope you can you can get back get back in here and be able to see the stream soon. I hope everything goes well uh, in the in the move. Uh, Brian says hi, great tutorial, awesome. I'm I'm glad you liked it. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it and uh, welcome. Uh, Claude BS, is there a video of that set up already? Um, yeah, so there's, I have done basically that exact same setup I've done already. The only difference is that I was building with Next.js instead of Create React App. And that's not really a huge difference. Almost all the steps are exactly the same. Uh, so, yeah, so I don't know. Um, I'll have to think about it, and I welcome your feedback on that. Um, I, I don't want to bore people by doing things again. Uh, I don't think that there's very much that has changed. Probably nothing has changed in the setup. If it was later on down the road and some things changed, um, like maybe like the way you set up Let's Encrypt or a newer version of uh, you know Ubuntu or something like that, maybe it would be worth it. I don't know. I'll think about it. Um, Patrick says, I like that kind of thing. I don't need any help with that, but I like things uh, where I can be helpful. Okay, cool. I'll, um, I'll keep that in mind. I'll think about it. Uh, William says, currently following your first project, is there a sequence between the first and second project? Um, a correlation, okay, a correlation between the first and second project. Um, they're not connected, I mean, they're, they're two completely separate websites. They're connected only in the sense that they're both React sites. Um, we did, I'm trying to think if we borrowed code or anything like that. Um, I don't even think that we really borrowed that much code. We actually we did. We did borrow some of the code. Uh, so other than the fact that they're both React and that some of this the code was was borrowed and reused in this project, um, there's there's not really um, a correlation. 
Uh, I mean, they're both done for the same, you know, for the same university. Um, but uh, you could definitely watch either one. You know, like, it's not like you'd have to watch the first one to understand the second one. Um, actually, with that being said, with that in mind, it may not be a bad idea to do the server setup again because there, there may be people who, um, for whatever reason, aren't really interested at all in Project 1, but they're interested in Project 2 uh, or whatever future projects we do. Um, so instead of making people go back, and watch the previous videos. Um, okay, I'm still thinking about it. Uh, there's a few more pros to doing it now. Um, yeah, William says, so it's fine if I just start watching your project too since it's ongoing? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, William said, thanks for answering. Uh, you're welcome, yeah, no problem. But yeah, definitely you can watch, uh, you don't need project one for project two. And in fact, I intend that um, a lot of what I do will be self-contained. So each project will be self-contained. You don't need to watch the other ones. Um, at some point, I am going to do some updates on Project 1. Uh, I think in October, I'm going to do some updates. So I'm not sure how I'm going to handle that um, in terms of will that be considered like a third project or will I just kind of tack it on to project one and maybe make separate play playlists for each project? I'm not 100% sure how I'll, I'll handle that. I think it kind of depends on how much I need to update it. If it's just going to be a few days, you know, it's it, that's not really a big deal. But if it's going to be like weeks of work, then I'll have to think about how I want to treat that. Uh, but... I've reached the bottom of the uh, live chat, and let's see, Sebastian says, update project one, day one. What do you mean, update like the title to make it more clear that it's project one, day one? Yeah, I definitely should. I've thought about that before. It's just... Every time I think about it, I'm not really in a position to change it. I mean, I'm busy or I'm streaming or I'm doing something. So uh, I'll, I'll have to um, make more of a, a, an effort to remember and do that. Um, yeah, that's, that's definitely a good suggestion. Thank you. Uh, all right, so um, I'm going to wrap things up here. Uh, thank you so much to everyone for watching, for contributing in the live chat, for contributing with, uh, with pull requests. Um, thanks for all your, your questions and, um, and all your encouragement. I really appreciate it. I will be back on Monday. And um, I'll, um, I'm not sure what time. I'll let you, you know, I'll let you all know what time. Uh, it'll be a notification in YouTube, and I'll put it on Twitter as well. Uh, I, th I think I should be uh, good to go for the um, for the normal. Oh wait, Tuesday. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. Monday is Labor Day, so in the United States, it's a uh, it's a national holiday on Monday. So I don't, I'm not working, so I won't. <laughs> thank you, Patrick. Uh, I don't know why how I forgot that. Um, I won't be here on Monday. On Tuesday, I will be back. So um, I won't. Yeah. So I won't see you again for you know three days. Um, so anyway, have a very nice weekend, and um, I'll see you back here on Tuesday.